What's going on, everybody? Happy New Year, and welcome back to the Grateful Ducks College Football Podcast. I'm your host, Bruhan Luke. Uh, same podcast, different name. Like I said on the previous show, we are going to rebrand and rename the podcast. So we are now going by the name Grateful Ducks. You could follow us on Twitter, GR8FUL Ducks CFB. That's at GR8FUL Ducks CFB. I've noticed down on the banner there, I added an extra letter A. Ignore that. It's GR8 Full Ducks CFB. Um, same shit, different day with this podcast. We're just going to keep on rolling, talking college football, uh, themed obviously around my Oregon Ducks and one of my favorite bands of all time, the Grateful Dead, who are a, have a very big fan base in Oregon and in Eugene. So we went with that title and that's what we're going to be rolling with moving forward. Uh, today on the show, we're going to be talking about the Fiesta Bowl featuring the Ducks we're going to also preview the college football semifinals here that are coming up this morning as well. And we're going to introduce a new segment called the Halftime Show that I'm going to be doing every episode as well. We'll talk more on that when we get to the Halftime Show. So let's get it going. Uh, starting out with the Fiesta Bowl today at noon central time. You've got Oregon versus Liberty from Glendale, Arizona. Oregon is an 18-point favorite in this game. Big number against the Liberty team that is undefeated. However, Liberty has not played any Power 5 schools at all this year out of the Sun Belt Conference. Uh, the total right now, last I looked, was at 70. That number is skyrocketing. Yesterday was at 66. People are hammering the over. Uh, just be fully aware of that if you want to bet the over in this game. That, that number is on the move. So at some point, you might want to take a look at the trends and flip back over to the under. But the Ducks at minus 18 total at this time of recording was at 70. Some keys to the game. Uh, for Oregon, a uh, couple of opt-outs and players that have decided not to play because they are going to be prepared for the NFL draft. Kyrie Jackson at uh defensive back star for them will be out uh also their all-american center jackson powers johnson who hopefully the chicago bears end up drafting in the upcoming draft he will also not be playing so that could impact uh a little bit of rhythm for bo Nix at quarterback and the offensive line we will see how things go there uh also out jaleel florence who has been with the team is out with a injury that he left the Pac-12 championship game with. Um, or no, I'm sorry. That was the previous game. He left against, I believe, Oregon State in the Civil War. He's still not back from that injury. Uh, so he will also not be playing. So the defensive backfield will be a little bit thin. Uh, some other keys. Talking about Liberty, they have a stud quarterback, Caden Salter. He could potentially expose that weakness for Oregon as – long as Oregon's front seven are not able to get to Caden Salter. I have a feeling with the roster that Oregon is bringing to the table that he's going to struggle a little bit with Oregon's defensive line where players like Brandon Dorless did not opt out. Jordan Birch, it sounds like, will play after leaving the Pac-12 championship game with an injury, so he should be in there rotating at the very least, rotating in. Um, other keys to this game, Bo Nix has decided to play. He is going to the NFL draft after this game, but he has decided to still play. He likes the idea of playing with his teammates one last time. I like that idea. Apparently Florida state did not. I could go on a long rant about how they all quit on the team. They quit and decided to not play in that bowl game. I've expressed it on Twitter. I don't need to go into more detail. Florida State essentially bitched out of their bowl game when they had an opportunity to prove to the world that they should have been in the playoffs. And they just walked away and pouted, and it was an embarrassing look for the sport. Um, on top of Bo Nix deciding to play, star running back Bucky Irving has declared for the NFL draft, but he is still going to play in this game as well. Um, some big, big key things to pay attention to with this game as well. Bo Nix 
is chasing some records in this game. He is trying to go after the all-time completion percentage record currently held by Mac Jones. At He is 0.2% away from the all-time completion percentage. So if he plays through the entirety of this game, that's a very good chance that he will break that record. Additionally, some school records on the line. Uh, Single-season passing touchdowns record. Bo Nix is three touchdowns away from breaking the passing touchdowns record and also passing yards. He is 310 yards away from needing to break the single season record for passing yards. Both of those are currently owned by former Heisman Trophy winner Marcus Mariota. So that would be a big deal if he broke those records and he's definitely going to chase those records. Um, which brings me to my bet for this game. I am going to bet Bo Nix passing yards over 319 and a half. Uh, he only needs 310 to break the record. I see him going way past that against a Liberty defense that is their weakness. Um, the fact that that number is that high tells me, one, that Vegas knows what they're doing. They're very aware of the situation. Also, the passing prop, the passing touchdown prop is at three and a half. It, I was looking for some two and a halves. You can't really find them out there. I couldn't at least. So three and a half at like plus 140 if you want to go that route. Um, I think the the Ducks cruise in this game, maybe a backdoor cover for Liberty. I'd be weary, like I said, at the start of the over simply because of the fact that that number is continuing to be on the rise. At 70, that's a pretty big number when it opened up at like 64, then to 66. Uh, I said on the Chicago Sports Bums podcast last month to get the over while you could because that number is going to continue to skyrocket. So bet Bo Nix over 319 and a half passing yards. That's my pick of the game. Ducks win this one pretty easily. Now, moving on. Let's get to the halftime show. So this is a new segment that I will be debuting today and moving forward. The halftime show is a segment where, for the most part, we aren't going to talk about college football. We're just going to talk about anything. It could be sports-related. I may do a beer review in this spot at times just to change things up uh, to have a little bit of a fun, a little bit of, a little bit of fun with this podcast. Um, so today on the Halftime Show, I'm talking about uh, bucket list sporting events that I would like to attend that I have not yet been to. Um, with today being the Rose Bowl, the Rose Bowl is a near and dear sporting event to my heart. I grew up watching that every year on New Year's Day. Uh, it's my favorite sporting event of the year, every year. I love watching the Rose Bowl. I went to the Rose Bowl in 2010 when Oregon played Ohio State. Went to the Rose Parade. Just a absolute beautiful event. The stadium, the sunset over the mountain, it's the field is just in pristine shape. The presentation of the whole event is glorious. Uh, I enjoyed that. It's probably the, the best sport event I've ever been to, and that says a lot. I've been to a uh, World Series game, All-Star game in baseball, Stanley Cup finals. Uh, but to me, the Rose Bowl tops all of those. And it got me to thinking, well, what other sporting events have I not been to that I would like to be at? be at uh so without further ado we'll just make a quick rundown here um as we go so the first one this is a picture of the waste management phoenix open in uh phoenix it might be in scottsdale technically it's just a huge party this is the 16th hole at uh the waste management phoenix open and everybody it's like a stadium they set up a giant stadium on the 16th hole. It's a par three. Uh, I believe there's like 20,000 people that get packed onto the 16th hole in, in the stadium. And then everybody throughout is just having a blast or drinking beers, having a party. Uh, you have caddies that race from the tee to the green on the 16th hole. The crowd is cheering and loud. It's not like your typical golf venue where it's quiet the fans get into it it gets rowdy if you ever get a chance to watch it it's typically super bowl weekend watch it on tv watch that 16th hole and look how much fun it is it's just if you like golf this is a must must go to event this is 
high up on my bucket list of items. Uh, currently with work, I won't be able to go anytime soon because that's during track season for me. Um, but if you can find a way to go, even if you're not a golf fan, go to that stadium on the 16th hole in the 16th green and just live it up. Have a, have the time of your life. Uh, next up, the Olympics. I believe the Olympics are coming to L.A. in 2028. Uh, this being the new year, this is now an Olympic year officially, believe it or not, already. Um, and I just, being the big track and field nerd that I am, I have to go to the Olympics and go watch all things track and field related. And obviously, I want to throw in some other random events. I want to go watch beach volleyball. I want to go watch uh, crew or rowing. I want to watch some random shit like archery or whatever other random events that they have. I want to go watch all the Olympics, but obviously I'm keying in on the track and field. Um, I would love to go watch swimming, but just going to the Olympics in general is a major bucket list item for me to see the best athletes in the world all around every, every athlete, the best in the world. I've seen a lot of good track and field meets in my lifetime. Been very fortunate. Um, to see a lot of the best of the best, but just to see the best in the world on the same stage all at once. That's a big deal for me to, to try to get to that. Uh, you got the Masters. Another one that will be tough to get to. Just to say you experienced it, uh, for those of you that are not aware of the Masters, Augusta National is one of the most beautiful places on earth as far as golf goes. Uh, it's a very strict place with rules, such as you cannot even bring a cell phone in to the venue with you. You have to leave it in your car. Or you have to check it in in the clubhouse. I don't know how that all works. I've never been to the Masters. I would like to go to the Masters and come back and share my stories one year. Uh, it just looks absolutely gorgeous. And seeing the highlights year in and year out of the Masters, uh, the history with Tiger Woods, Jack Nicklaus, Arnold Palmer, uh, the green jacket, it just would be incredible. I would pay whatever it takes to go there just for one weekend down in Augusta, Georgia, and check out that event. Uh, last but not least, I didn't want to go into a super long list. This is just a halftime show. Uh, the College World Series in Omaha. This is high up on my list, being a huge baseball fan. Watching this every year, seeing the College World Series and how it gets bigger and better every single year. I get more and more into this event as the years go by. They recently got a new stadium in Omaha for the College World Series. I would love to, even if it's not the championship series, one of the other earlier rounds of the College World Series is something that I feel like is needed to be done. Instead of doing a baseball road trip for major, to go to a major league stadium i would love to go and change it up and go to omaha for a year one summer and go to the college world series uh so that's a halftime show i'll do this every every podcast uh it'll be a different type of segment if i have guests in here i might just do rapid fire random questions with them uh, i might like I said, do a beer review in there or just other thoughts on sports or life in general, or maybe I'll do some sort of story about something going on in the world. I don't know. Uh, maybe it'll be a, a road trip that I went on or a vacation. Who knows? But that's the halftime show. Um, looking forward to doing that. Every podcast, every episode, that'll be a new segment. I'll probably get some fancy music or video intro or outro for it. I don't know. Thanks for tuning in to the Halftime Show. Let's get back to the big news, though. Let's get to the college football playoff. So the first game today, the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl, like I just said, got done talking about. My favorite sporting event every year is the Rose Bowl. Um, Michigan versus, versus Alabama. Michigan is a one-and-a-half point favorite. The total is at 45-and-a-half. The public is all over Alabama as a dog. I don't think that that's the right play. Uh, some things to key in on, however, Zach Zinder who had that leg injury against Ohio State. That could really impact Michigan's offensive line and the dynamic there for this game. Uh, we'll see how they handle that, and they're obviously going to make the adjustments that they need to. 
Um, Blake Corum and Donovan Edwards in the running game for Michigan against the Alabama defense. Alabama seems to do well against the run. We, we'll see how things fare. J.J. McCarthy has only lost one game in his college career. He's 25-1 and one as a starter. Uh, he's back healthy. He's been playing dinged up since the Penn State game, maybe a little bit before that. Uh, so having him back healthy, fully ready to go, people are saying, yeah, he hasn't looked great down the stretch. Yeah, he's been playing hurt, guys. I got news for you. When you're playing hurt, you're not going to play well. When you're healthy, you're going to be a lot more effective. He's had just about a month to rest up for this game. He's going to be ready to go. Um, I think the Alabama play is an overreaction to their performance against Georgia. The SEC opponent, Nick Saban, knows how to prepare his team. I think it's overplayed with this storyline that Nick Saban giving him multiple weeks to prepare. That should always be an Alabama bet. I don't think that's the case here. Um, this is Michigan's third consecutive year in the college football playoff. Alabama has a lot of newcomers. Now, they have the veteran coach that has been here, but a lot of guys like Jalen Milrow, this is his first time playing in this, this atmosphere. Um, just also remember that Alabama had had the loss against Texas. They still made the playoff with the one loss and a very strong win against a very good Georgia team. However, they had a fourth and 31 Hail Mary to beat Auburn. That snuck to sneak by a, a very average Auburn team. Also, remember the Arkansas game. They had to sneak by Arkansas. Uh, they've had some very close wins against some very average teams. Um, Keys to this game, I'm going to go with Michigan. I'm taking Michigan to win. Um, Michigan's defense is very underrated. Uh, not enough people talk about how good the Michigan defense is. They really are going to show out on the national stage here for the playoff. And the reason why Michigan wins this game won't be because of J.J. McCarthy. It won't be because of Blake Corum. It'll be because of the strength of this dominant defense. They're going to show up and dominate that Alabama offense. I would take the under here, 45 and a half as well. Um, a prop bet for everybody. Colston Loveland, uh, Michigan's tight end. Alabama's weakness is defending the tight end. I'm going to go with a Colston Loveland anytime touchdown bet. Um, it's at about plus 150, I believe. I got to look this up now. So as I fumble through my phone and look up this bet, just know that Alabama does not defend the tight end very well. Uh, also, his his receiving yards, if you could find it, is about 40 in the 40s. I would take, if you want to, if you want to parlay that, um, you could go ahead and take the over in his receiving yards if you could find it in the 40s. That's a good bet. Uh, anytime touchdown for Col Colston Loveland, plus 270. Uh, take that all to the bank all day. Colston Loveland, anytime touchdown. Uh, J.J. McCarthy loves his tight end, and he knows that this is going to be a mismatch for Alabama on defense. Uh, keep an eye on Colston Loveland all game. Moving on to the Sugar Bowl, the evening slate. You have Texas versus Washington. Texas is at minus four, and the total is 62 and a half. I cannot believe the total is that low with how powerful this Washington offense is. And we're not even getting into the Texas side of it. Uh, they have a very good team. They have a very good defense. Um, but that total, I'm going to tell you right out right out the gates, I'm taking the over 62 and a half. I think this game will go well into the 70s um, moving forward. Uh, some keys to this, some key numbers to keep an eye on. Texas has eight wins this season against bowl teams. They also have that win against Alabama, the only team in the college football playoff to have a win against another college football playoff team. I mean, that's kind of a stupid stat, but it's still there. They beat Alabama. Um, Washington has the most wins versus ranked opponents this year out of the Pac-12. Very strong conference. I still think they were the better conference this year over the SEC. Um, other things to note, 
Washington's offensive line won the Joe Moore Award this year, which is given to the best offensive line in the country, not just one player, the entire offensive line. I don't think that was the right choice. I think Oregon had the better offensive line, uh, but I don't get the votes. And I'm also a little biased, but Washington does have the best offensive line in the country going up against that Texas defense. That's going to make a world of a difference if they could protect Michael Penix and let him air the ball out. He's, Michael Penix is not a mobile quarterback necessarily, but he loves his wide receivers. He's got three wide receivers with NFL potential, including a top 10 pick in Roma Dunze. I think he's going to look to him early and often. Speaking of that, Michael Penix leads the country in passing yards this year with his three weapons on offense. Uh, what's Texas's weakness? They're secondary. So I really think Michael Penix is going to have a big game here as well. So you've got the over at 62 and a half. Washington as a dog, which I still don't understand being an undefeated dog. You beat a top 10 Oregon team twice this season. You've got more wins against ranked opponents than any other team in the country. Four points is way too much. Definitely take Washington in the points. I'm also going to take Washington on the money line. Washington wins this game outright. Um, which is disgusting, absolutely disgusting for me to say as an Oregon fan. But just watching this team, Texas is a very complete team. Uh, Washington wins. Washington wins this game. So that's your Fiesta Bowl and college football playoff preview. Um, keep an eye out next week. I believe Sunday, January 7th is the date that we are doing the Getting Drafty Pod with uh, magnificent Stan and Aloha, Mr. Hand and our guy Shankster. We're going to be drafting uh, college football categories. So we're going to have the all-time best team. We're going to draft uh, helmets, drafting mascot. We are also drafting a coach and something else. Uh, best game, all-time best game. So we're, we're doing a all college football draft next or this coming Sunday, January 7th, I believe. We decided on 7 o'clock. Uh, follow Getting Drafty Pod on Twitter to get more details there. Uh, enjoy the day. Happy New Year. Watch all the college football. This is this is one of my absolute favorite days of the year. Like I said, the Rose Bowl is my all-time favorite sporting event. I love watching it every single year. Uh, tune in. Have fun. Uh, hopefully, your bets win. I know I listed those all to you as well today we'll see how things go uh go ducks go blue and let's have ourselves a day uh we'll see you sometime next week we'll preview the national championship game and we'll see if i was right or if i was wrong and until next time peace out happy new year